previous classes today we will discuss about the insect excretory system why this excretion is required and otherwise we have a dice that insects have a digestive system wherein so the food is taken inside and the food is digested and the macromolecules are absorbed through the midgut epithelia then the remaining waste material is just put to anus as a fecal matter a solid material but any living organism in any living organism the animals especially each cell each cell in the entire tissue system and the body system each cell is extremely busy in performing various duties it's really busy actually and there are a lot of production of the hormone production of the proteins metabolism anabolism catabolism what not everything is happens within the cell system in a very close micro environment and the followed by the tissues and the followed by larvae so when these kind of processes happens at a regular interval on a routine basis there are many chemicals which are being generated ions which are being generated and many other non useful chemicals are also being generated and these non useful things should be shunted out of the body from the cell system to the tissue system organs and finally it should go out of the body because the micro environment within the cell system should be maintained uniformly otherwise things will go in a haywire and it's a big problem there should be ionic balance so the balance should be always maintained so for the maintenance of the balance in the micro environment and the waste material should be shunted out of the body and that a elimination of this kind of metabolic waste is called excretion and in insects in the insects the most for that matter insects also lot of metabolic wastes are coming out like for example respiratory metabolic waste which is nothing but carbon dioxide it has to go out then cellular metabolic waste is a nitrogen metabolic waste is nitrogen waste is but all these things should be go out of the for example in case of carbon dioxide which is the metabolic waste if the carbon dioxide is there within the body system the you can imagine how the cell burst so it has to be shunted out that happens through spiratorial system and also sometimes through integument and as far as the metabolic waste especially the nitrogen metabolic waste insects have a wonderful system called mobilis and tubules in the previous class when we had a discussion about the digestive system i told you very clearly that there are kind of tubules which are joining at the joint of the midgut and hindgut these tubules we call them as a malfusion tubules and i also told you clear that the malfusion tubules are not the part of the digestive system but however they are extremely important organs as far as the excretion is concerned and the excretory waste the metabolic waste within the hemolymph should be brought inside the malfusion tubules and the malfusion tubules will send all these waste into the joint of the midgut and hindgut so that it to be shunted out of the body along with the fecal matter with this brief background then we will enter into the topic malfusion tubules you can just see in this picture few important points like the internal environment of the cell should be maintained because the cell is extremely busy and the 
various ions, various metabolic wastes sent out of the cell to maintain the constant level of salt and osmotic pressure. And these wastes can be a metabolic wastes, can be a solid wastes, semi solid wastes, liquid or gases. And finally, the elimination of the waste toxic nitrogenous metabolites derived from the protein and purine metabolism is extremely important compared to other things because the nitrogen metabolites which are coming from this protein metabolism that has to be that's in a very huge quantities and the nitrogen will immediately convert into the ammonia and in case of insects Ammonia is actually, otherwise ammonia is very toxic. Very, very toxic. So nitrogen, if it is get, is converted into ammonia, which is very toxic, and to become non-toxic, it requires a lot of water. You can just imagine how insects need huge quantities of water if the, the nitro ammonia has to be eliminated out. That's the reason insects have a wonderful system. The conversion of all these nitrogen wastes into uric acid, which is less toxic, require very, very less water and also which is insoluble. And there are few metabolic wastes. That's what we have discussed previously. The most important is carbon dioxide, is a metabolic waste from the respiratory, which is in gaseous form, which is shunted out of the body excreted out of the body through body wall and tracheal system. And urea, uric acid, which is a solid material, which is excreted out and shunted out through malpies and tubules mines. See the pictures here. The malpies and tubules are the long, simple tubes the number may vary. One side it is closed, one side it is open and joining at the mid-gut and gut joint. The number may vary from the insect to insect and the size may vary from the insect to insect and the arrangement also may vary from the insect to insect. If you look into this picture very closely, the malfusion tubules are single cell epithelial cell tubes which are closed at one end, which are closed at one end and opening in into the joint of the midgut and hindgut. Opening into the joint of the midgut and hindgut. And you can see this picture very clearly. The layer is a single layer. It means the epithelial cells are single layer. They are long tubular epithelium closed at one end and joining at the joint of the midgut and hindgut, usually floating very freely in the hemolymph floating very, very freely, generally, in most of the insects, floating very, very freely in the hemolymph. They, they're actually bathing inside the hemolymph. When you dissect out the diastro system, you get a yellow-colored mat or the gut, mid-gut, or some yellow-colored small tubes which are very, very floating very freely inside the hemolymph. They are malfusion tubules. They are the most important organs which are actually regulating the excretion. Rasmoregulatory system. They absorb salts, they absorb water, they absorb wastes from all surrounding hemolymph because they are actually floating inside the hemolymph. And all the metabolic waste from the cell system which comes to the hemolymph at the end of the day 
and hemolymph the metabolic waste is present in the hemolymph has to be removed out otherwise again there is a ionic imbalance there will not regulation as far as the osmotic pressure is concerned it's a big problem there is a reason all the metabolic wastes which are coming into the hemolymph has to food the hemolymph has to be purified the hemolymph has to be clean that cleaning process is done by these molecules and tubules you can see the picture here you can see the picture here it is a cellulose epithelial cell and these numbers may vary from insect to insect in some they are absent usually in some primitive insects they are very less in number and more in number as far as the locust and aphids the more hundred in the aphids so they they are like a sac like a tube like a papilla like very rarely they are branch usually they are not branch but they are always a sac like tube like papilla like the size also may vary from 2 to 100 mm length and 30 to 100 micrometer in diameter usually these malfusion tubules are floating very freely or bathing in hemolymph the distal ends the closed ends they are freely floating inside the hemolymph because it is actually joining at the mid gut and high gut join and that kind of situation is very very normal in most of the insects it means the malfusion tubules are freely floating in the hemolymph but in some insects the malfusion tubules are not freely floating you can see on the left side picture here the malfusion tubules are freely floating but in some insects the distal end this is the distal end the closed end in some insects the distal ends are closely in arrangement with the rectum the distal end of these malfusion tubules are in close association with the rectal part they are not freely floating in the hemolymph instead they lie very closely where they lie very closely in an arrangement with the rectum and that kind of arrangement is called cryptonephridial condition the distal ends of the malfusion tubules are not freely floating or bath hemolymph but in coming very close contact with the rectum the purpose is there yes and this kind of cryptonephridial system is very very common in the terrestrial insects very very common in the terrestrial insects very very common the insects which are living in the dry atmospheres as well because they want to conserve the water so that's how that's how when they come very close in contact with the rectum the reabsorption of water happens and goes inside the malfusion tubes here you see the picture reabsorption the water from the rectum lumen will be absorbed into the malfusion tubules and which is extremely important so this kind of arrangement is called cryptonephridial condition let us see the structure of the malfusion tubes so this is a single layer epithelial cell that's 
extremely important most important and they are remember wherever the epithelial epithelial cells are there whether it is a mid gut the malpighian tubules whether it's a integument they are the most important and extremely powerful and extremely useful and extremely living and more performing most important functions and in the here also even in the malpighian tubules it is the same situation and if you look very closely inside the malpighian tubules just kind of open and relax look into the structure of the malpighian tubules and they have a outside a basement membrane a non cellular basement membrane outside a non cellular basement membrane and next to non cellular basement membrane inside the most important epithelial cells most important single cell thing you can see here it is a single cell but if you cut open you will see five cells in total but otherwise it is a single cell thickness so if you look into the structure of alpha tube here the mal tubules the outside is actually a non cellular basement membrane which is then inside with single cell thick epithelial cells usually if you cross open cut sec cross section you will see at least two to five epithelial cells and the inside plasma membrane is highly foldable to have as much as surface area as possible for absorption purpose for secretion purpose and these malpighian tubules are richly supplied with the tracheal system richly supplied with the trachea so that the oxygen supply is given to each and individual cell that indicates there's a lot of metabolic activity of these cells you we can divide these malpighian tubules into two regions the distal secretory region and the proximal absorptive region this absorptive region is about 1/3 of the total length and this has got a brush border this has got a brush border and you can see the uric acid granules here the distal part is called as a secretory region the secretory region cells these epithelial cells will have a more mitochondria more mitochondria it has got a lot of secretory activity and that 
the plasma membrane inside is very, very closely, highly foldable. That's called honeycomb border. Simply speaking, in the malfusion tubules have two mechanisms. One is secretory mechanism, one is absorptive mechanism. The secretory region, which is a two-third part of the total length and which is a distal region, and these epithelial cells will have a more number of mitochondria, a lot of secretory activities, and these epithelial cells, the inside plasma membrane is highly foldable and very closely packed, and that border is called honeycomb border. Basically, this honeycomb border is having a secretory activity, which secretes a lot of enzymes and other things. Another part is absorptive region. The absorptive region is proximal end, which actually joins at the joint of the mid gut and hind gut. The inside plasma membrane is, is also folded but not too much close like honeycomb border that here we call them as a brush border. And I look into the picture above. So it means, so the nitrogen wastes, the uric acid will be absorbed inside and that uric acid will be sent into the gut. There are many number of things which are getting inside the malfusion tubules, including water, and again the water will be reabsorbed at the rectal part. This is how the metabolic wastes, which are converted as a uric acid, will be absorbed by the malfusion tubules and sent into the hindgut portion at the joint of mid gut and hind gut so that the metabolic waste will be, wastes will be shunted out, will be sent out of the body through the anus along with the fecal matter. The most important duty, the most important function of these malfusion tubules is excretion, which is nothing but removal of the waste materials, basically to regulate the internal environment of the body which means they have a wonderful role, important role in keeping the ionic balance, water balance. And in some insects, they also store calcium. But very interesting thing is, some insects like glow worms, probably you'll see these glow worms, night time. Miniguru Purugulu. You know where from this glow is coming? That chemical which is responsible for glowing of the abdominal region is just because of the chemical synthesized and released by the malfusion tubules. In some insects, the malfusion tubules, because excretion is the primary function. So besides excretion, malfusion tubules are also modified or having some other duties. In some insects like Chrysoperla, like aphid lions, Chrysoperla carnia, or any species, they lay the eggs with stalks. Usually, insects, eggs will not have any stalks. All these eggs are laid in groups. Probably in some insects, they cover the eggs with some animal hairs. But if you look into this insect, the eggs are stock, and that stock, material for the production of that, the stock of the egg, is actually coming from the malfusion tube. It's, it's wonderful, something interesting. And you just look into the last picture, which is a, the spittle box. It looks like a spit. And the spittle bus 
they actually these in tubules of the spittle bulbs they produce some kind of foamy kind of material and that foam kind of material is actually secreted from the malfusion tubules and that material is useful for safeguarding their just hatched nymphs so actually there are nymphs inside this foam the newly hatched nymphature nymphs are actually inside this foam if you remove the foam you will see the nymphs of the spittle bugs so these kind of modifications are additional duties are also performed by these malfusion tubules what else besides the malfusion other organs of excretion as we have discussed previously that the carbon dioxide is one of the very very important metabolic waste which is coming from each cell and the carbon dioxide has to be shunted out of the body and that job that important elimination of the carbon dioxide is actually done by spiracular system spiracles and also in human the tracheal system an elementary canal also has got some excretory duties the epithelial cells when we are discussed about different types of epithelial cells in the elementary canal the midget epithelia we had a discussion that regenerative cells storage excretion so some metabolic waste is will be captured by the epithelial cells and these epithelial cells will store this metabolic waste as a waste material for life form and it has got a wonderful important role as far as excretion is concerned and nephrocytes these nephrocytes are just below the integument and uh, these nephrocytes have got as some kind of duty to perform in capturing the metabolic wastes and these nephrocytes have a wonderful role as far as the excretion is concerned and oocytes which are present near the abdominal spiracles and the ureter cells the fat body cells which are storing urea it means these are the cells different kinds of cells like nephrocytes oocytes ureter cells chloride cells all these cells they try to store the metabolic waste for some time sometime these cells will be sented out at the time of molting process or some they will store it forever till the death this the most important organ as far as the excretion is concerned malfusion tubules followed by the integument and tracheal system it means at the end of the day we should remember every cell is extremely busy every cell is releasing lot of metabolic wastes in the process and all these metabolic wastes should be shunted out of the body to maintain the balance or osmotic pressure ionic balance within the cell system so these metabolic wastes which are coming out of the cell system dissolved in the hemolymph and hemolymph is very where hemolymphically flowing inside the hemocell body cavity all these metabolic wastes which are coming into the hemolymph has to be removed it means the heme has to be filtered out the filtration job the filtration job is done by the malfusion tubules it means the malfusion tubules are purifying the blood of the insect most important the metabolic waste is a nitrogen waste that nitrogen based the nitrogen will be converted into uric acid in the insects 
the uric acid which is present in the blood has to be removed out the uric acid which is present in the human lymph it has to be removed out that removal job is done by the malfusion tubules because the malfusion tubules are floating inside all over the hemolymph fluid and the hemolymph is just when the malfusion tubules are just floating within the hemolymph they will try to bring in all the uric acid inside the malfusion tubules with active or passive mechanisms all this uric acid which is coming inside the malfusion tubules will be shunted out of the malfusion tubules into the joint of the mid gut and hind gut so that the test will be shunted out of the body along with the fecal matter so that is the beauty of the malfusion tubules and in some insects of course the malfusion tubules are not freely floating but they the distal end may be attached very closely to the rectum that system is called cryptonephridian system that is very common system in all the terrestrial insects it basically to conserve the water reabsorption of the water from the rectum to the malfusion tubules again Malfusion tubules are single-layered epithelial cells, long tubes. It looks like a pad. It looks like a tubes. And distal end is closed, and proximal end is opening into the mid gut and hind gut joint. And the distal end is a secretory end. Two third of the part is the secretory end because the epithelial cells are extremely busy cells. Frankly speaking, everywhere they have an excretion. metabolism anabolism catabolism every, every job is done by the epithelial cells because epithelial cells please hormone epithelial cells synthesize enzymes what not everything is done by the epithelial cells so that's how the metabolic waste is from the insect body most importantly insect hemolymph will be filtered it means insect hemolymph will be filtered with the help of malfusion tubules so that all these metabolic wastes the nitrogen wastes which is in the form of urea will be removed from the hemolymph with the help of the malfusion tubules these malfusion tubules which takes inside all this uric acid will be removed from the body along with the fecal matter so that's it as far as the excretory system is concerned and tomorrow we'll be discussing another system thank you very much and with this we'll be closing this lecture and see you tomorrow If you have any questions, please let me know. If you have any questions, please let me know, and we'll have some discussion as well. Any questions? Any questions from anybody? if there are no questions then we will stop and see you take care bye bye